there's so many questions that, that people have that was never brought to light by the police department or, or in proper investigation of the incident and the tragedy that happened in Zanesville, Ohio back in October of 2011. And we received some uh, very good inside information uh, when we were out at the Thompson Farm uh, in May of, of 2012 that uh, one, uh, we know Terry was alive at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and his body was found at 5.20 the, the same afternoon, which only gave him two hours and 20 minutes uh, to pull off everything that they accused Terry of, of pulling off. Uh, and uh, people that, who have walked through the scenario uh, just can't get all of it done in that time frame. Well, uh, amongst the, the not being able to do this in a proper timeline for one person, uh, there's so many unanswered questions. One is, is there was three chains and padlocks on each cage uh, at Terry's facility. Uh, none of the chains were, or padlocks were cut with the bolt cutters. The only ones that were cut were the three cages that were cut open. Another disturbing part about the whole thing is there was three tigers in a cage and one obtained a uh, white 17 year old tiger that only had three teeth and when they discovered Terry's body they discovered this white tiger laying next to Terry's body uh, whether it was protecting him felt sorry for him uh, or, or was in the process of, of eating the body who knows uh, but either way the two remaining tigers that were with that tiger in the cage were still in fact in the cage and instead of plugging the hole with a, a wire panel, uh, the police decided to shoot the two tigers inside the cage. No, nobody uh, ever answered to why they were shooting the animals in the cage. They actually shot some cubs uh, that were inside the cages as well that we obtained pictures and, and I've seen pictures of the cubs uh, that were slaughtered inside the cages. Uh, there was one door uh, that housed the cage to a full-grown African lion that obtained a string uh, to the door long enough that you could stand behind the cage around the corner and pull the door open. So whoever did that obviously knew that that lion was aggressive. Now the troublesome thing about somebody who owns as many cats as I do is you know in fact that the leopards are the most dangerous animals that there is as far as big cats. You would never have made it out of there letting them leopards loose. Um, so the leopards were the only cats not released that day. So whoever did this, uh, and that's part of my curiosity, is if Terry wanted to do this and Terry wanted to die uh, and have his animals eat him, um, as far as his story goes, uh, to cover this whole thing up, is he would have let the most aggressive animals out uh, if he wanted to cause uh, mayhem uh, for the town and the community. Uh, it would have been my first impression to let the most dangerous animals out and, and wreak havoc on the community. So that, in my own mind, tells me that Terry probably didn't do all this. Nobody has answered a uh, proper question that I've asked uh, the House of Representatives and uh, you know nobody else would comment on camera while I was in Ohio that how come paralyzing agents weren't used or offered to be used to where they could paralyze these animals in 10 and 15 seconds uh, which would have gave them anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes to, to ascertain these animals and put them back in cages. Um, so, no, no, to this date, nobody has had to answer to why they chose to just slaughter this many animals instead of being prepared. You had two zoos respond to this whole deal, and none of them came with the proper medicine to, to handle this kind of a situation. Actually, in fact, we called uh, the sheriff's department the day this was all going on and we offered our assistants to come over and try and, and catch some of the animals and, and keep them alive and put them back in and once again uh, clear back in January of, of 2011 when we offered help then we were turned down and we were turned down again this time.
Okay, well, there was uh, two Celebi uh macaques that are extremely endangered, and they're worth about $10,000 a piece. Uh, they remained in the cages inside the house, and there was uh, three leopards uh, and a bear uh, who were not let out. Um, one of the leopards died at the Columbus Zoo uh, due to, uh, according to the USDA, lack of trained personnel. Uh, and they closed a shift door on his neck and broke his neck and had to be put to sleep. Um, my explanation of, of why those animals weren't released was, two, somebody knew the value uh, because you, leopards are still worth something or full-grown lions and tigers are not. Uh, leopards are the most aggressive animals uh, and somebody would have really got hurt if they let the leopards go. And the reason why they did not let the Celebes apes go is because they're worth $10,000 a piece. Uh, they were all uh, confiscated and sent to the Columbus Zoo. And uh, it, it took uh, Marion Thompson months uh, to get her animals back. They tried everything they could uh, to not return her animals. But uh, thankfully, she got them all back here just a couple weeks ago. Um, all of the bodies of the animals that, that were massacred uh, that day in October were actually, they dug a, a large hole there on the farm, just, just beside the barn, and uh, buried them in, right there on the farm. Okay, well, uh, the inside information that we have of, of some of the very, very first people on the scene and discovered Terry's body, uh, told us and walked us through the, the scenario that Terry's body, first of all, was found on a horse path that Terry never went on. Um, he was found approximately 17 feet away from a gun that the ATF further found on that it belonged to one of the sheriff's deputies. And then he claimed that he had sold it to Terry. Um, so that was swept under the rug. We've never heard anything else about why uh, Terry was killed with a cop's gun. Uh, back to the 17 foot thing, the gun was 17 foot away from Terry's body. And from the source that we have says that the body had not been drugged. Uh, the brain matter from, from Terry's gunshot wound to the head was actually still underneath his head, uh, which says that the body had not been drugged. Um, and uh, possibly not even standing up or kneeling uh, when he was shot, uh, if the brain matter was still uh, on the ground underneath his head. Well, the, the sheriff's office and the police reports were trying to uh, put it off that the tigers or the lions had drugged him 17 foot away from the gun and the bolt cutters. And uh, trying to get the people of America and the world to believe that the animals were in the process of eating him. Um, he was found uh, on the horse path. Uh, deceased with his pants unzipped and pulled down to his ankles and I just can't imagine somebody that wanted to wreak havoc on a community by killing himself and letting the animals go to embarrass himself uh, as a corpse by pulling his own pants down and there's no earthly way that uh, a lion or a tiger would definitely unbutton unzip your pants and pull them down to your ankles. Um, our, our sources uh, that was there that day from point A to point uh, Z uh, said that there was never any crime scene photos of the body taken or uh, of the scene. Uh, we called the sheriff's office and asked them if there was any crime scene photos and the people we talked to said that there was not. Uh, we got a hold of the autopsy report and all the sheriff's deputies reports and ne nowhere in any of the reports does it mention crime scene photos. Uh, there was one little sketch of, of where they found the gun and where they found the body. Um, but to have something of this magnitude happen 
uh, in, in my police experience of being a police chief uh, in Texas, the first thing you do is obtain crime scene photos, even if it required leaving the body there for a day uh, so you could properly investigate. So there was no fingerprints taken, there was no crime scene pictures taken. Uh, they left the holster of the gun laying on back of a pickup uh, that, that belonged to the, to the gun that supposedly Terry killed himself with. But the most confusing part to me is they found the box of shells inside his house that belonged to the gun uh, that uh, was used to uh, end Terry's life. And they were bought at Kmart. And you would have thought that they would have fingerprinted the box or at least went to Kmart to obtain some kind of security camera footage to see who purchased the, the weapons, uh, the to see who purchased the bullets uh, that were used in the gun. <clears throat> and then uh, we found out that Terry was right-handed and uh, played the guitar with his right hand, so he was dominantly right-handed. And the bullet exited out the left side of his head. Uh, so if you're going to be right-handed and you hold a gun, uh, a pistol, with your left hand and put it in your mouth, it would normally go out the right side of your head, not the left side of your head, where if you had a gun in your mouth and you shot it off, it would more or less come out the left side of your head. So uh, the gun residue was basically found on the wrong side of or the wrong hand. The gun residue was found on this wrong hand, and the attorney general reports for the gun residue uh, clearly states that it's not proof of any kind of suicide. Really, the, the more I look into the story, the crazier it gets. Um, you know, was Terry killed for an agenda for the animal rights movement? Was Terry killed uh, involved in uh, illegal guns? Uh, or was Terry killed so somebody could obtain his property uh, and frack on it? or? Uh, was Terry really crazy and killed himself? I believe from the other inside information at this point in my story, in my investigation, that I believe we have some very high up officials uh, that are playing in this game. And it more or less involves nothing but uh, illegal guns. My whole point uh, of even nosing into this is A, I would like to uh, clear the animal industry's name because not everybody that owns exotic animals is a nut or uh, a druggie that's just going to jump off the deep end and let their animals loose. There's a whole lot of people out there that love and care for their animals and take very good care of their animals. And second of all, which is the biggest thing for me, is if something like this happened to me, uh, and I have promised uh, Marion that because I don't believe in my heart that Terry killed himself and did all this, uh, because anybody that loves your animals would know that they'd have been slaughtered. And if Terry loved his animals, uh, which I believe he did, he did not want them to end up being slaughtered. Uh, so my ultimate goal is I would want someone to fight and clear my name. So if uh, I believe in my heart, Terry didn't, <clears throat> Terry didn't do this. So I would like to clear his name. Um, you know, I met uh, Marion a couple times at, at some auctions. I uh, just passed her by, uh, talked to her about a cub that she had a couple times uh, outside of, of the farm there in Ohio. And, uh, you know, just as a, a colleague in the same industry and never really knew him personally. but. Uh, I have spoken to her many times, uh, emails back and forth, and uh, grown to uh, really kind of be a, a good friend, colleague of Marion's. And uh, she asked for my help, and she asked me not to stop fighting for Terry, so I'm not going to until we have some answers.